Good afternoon, Leslie. Good afternoon, Mel. It's nice so lovely. You. I know, it's so lovely to be able to chat like this and to see you. And I have to say, it's a really impressive bookcase behind you, Leslie. <laughs> well, we have lots. There's uh, three, four in this room. Fantastic. Um, yeah. Oh, well, Leslie, um, very, very many, many congratulations on winning the Tyndall's Rose Bowl Award. And um, I know you also got some Tyndall's vouchers and a, you know, a big thank you to Tyndall's for sponsoring us again this year. Yes, um, indeed. And what a lovely prize to win. So, you know, well done. And you've won it for your painting, Perched on the Edge. And um, I wonder whether you could just talk a little bit about what inspired you to paint that picture, which is right. unique, unique and charming. Thank you. Um, there, there are two inspirations. Um, first of all, um, when we were going through our wood pile to um, sort it out ready for the winter, came across this little sliver of wood. I don't know if you can see that. Oh, <laughs> it is a little sliver. <laughs> and to me, that looked like lots of buildings on the, perched on the top. And so I did a drawing of it in my sketchbook, which I have here. Uh, rather exaggerated and elongated in, in the wood. But um, so that was my initial inspiration. And then um, dur during the lockdown and, and continuing, my family have been, um, we, we've been going, uh, joining together weekly on Zoom calls, family calls. And we set each other a challenge each week, a different subject might be just the word, quite a random word. And um, in one particular week in July, uh, one of our daughters um, uh, suggested the word perimeter. So I thought, ah, oh, this drawing that I've done, um, I will, uh, now if you excuse me, I will flip over to uh, the screen. Uh, so there's the finished picture. But prior to that, um, I've got uh, a number of inspirations. Right, so that's from the sketchbook. Um, then did a sketch on uh, a sheet of paper and with imaginary houses, buildings. Um, and then I was trying out different inks using a stick, um, a nib, feather and different types of brushes and using quink ink. And I love quink ink because it, it makes fantastic colours and shapes as it is dampened. And this is um, just spraying the paper to, to see the colours merging and blending. And then just um, on another sheet of paper, dragging those colours down. And you can see at the bottom how the, the quink ink, it's black ink, turns into purples and browns, ochres, pinks, all sorts of gorgeous things. So that was the basis of the colouring. So back to the drawing, which I then inked over and the, the buildings at the top here um, were drawn in with a, um, a waterproof ink pen. Um, I think it was a uni pen, but I've got so many of these sort of pens, I'm not too sure exactly which one it was. And then I started dribbling water down the rock edges and followed by some quink ink, which flowed. Some places it, it accumulated and others it flowed and diluted. Then I added some paint and I kept to quite a limited palette of colours. I needed a little bit of green to show that there was some plant life up in the, the town um, and perhaps a little bit of that had been dragged down and um, while I was doing this I kept going away from it and coming back and thinking what should the next part of this be because I hadn't really got a story at this point and it was all a bit of a, a doodle and a playing with the 
the inks. And um, I thought it's now looking a little bit as though it's being thrust up out of the earth. So that could be hot magma that's um, on the side there. You know, I, I'll make up my stories as I go along really. <laughs> um, and then, then I, um, I haven't got another in between stage. I think I might've just got so carried away, I just carried on. So with this, I finished off with more ink lines and I think I can probably zoom in a little bit on that or maybe not. So there, there's ink lines on the, uh, the structure. And um, I also added a little bit more color in the form of these pencils, again, for quite limited colors. Um, now the background, I, I didn't know whether to just leave it as a, a white background like that. So if you can imagine the, the rocks had already been painted, the town was painted and I was left with a white background. I wasn't sure what to do at that point. So I thought, well, if it turns out awful, it turns out awful, it doesn't matter. Um, so I, I felt it needed something. And with this idea that it might be something that's been thrust out of the earth, there's likely to be smoke, steam, magma, and what else coming out of the, the earth. So I wet the, the background in, in part and dropped some uh, elements of the quink ink in, which gave these really dark areas and just allowed that to bleed a little bit and dropped in a little bit of extra color here and there to create the, the fiery areas. And then left it, had a cup of tea. <laughs> It's incredible. It's incredible how such a unique and unusual painting, you know, which ha could be interpreted, as you say, in different ways, um, can start off as a tiny piece of wood. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I keep searching the wood pile for something else that's interesting. There, there's some lovely pieces with um, lichen on, which we probably won't burn. Um, but um, yeah, I, I find inspiration from um, various things that just crop up really accidentally uh, without any planning. Do you do you think that the the last eight months, you know, partly due to lockdown, the pandemic, and then obviously a slight release, and then a lockdown again? Do you do you think that that's affected the way that you you see your art or your you perceive paintings that you want to do? Do you, has it changed you in any way? Has it made you different? I think now that I have a weekly challenge, I try to do a painting each week. Sometimes it doesn't work. I mean, the, the challenge last week I'd set up and so I set a quiz. So I didn't do any painting at all. But um, this is with your family? Yeah, yeah with the family, oh, the family, okay. family Zoom. Yeah. Um, some, some weeks I'm greatly inspired and I produce more than one picture. This took um, the whole week to, to finish because I kept coming back to it and changing my mind and doing bits and pieces to it. I, I love the way on, I mean, I think I talked to you about the, the painting quite early on, didn't I? And I said yes. that I, I, it, it, it was just so different and unusual, but I love the way that you've combined quite a few watercolour techniques and watercolour media, haven't you? You, you medium, you've you've sort of done your inks and you've done your paints, but you've also done soft edges, hard edges, mm. uh, left areas of white, there's some splashes of colour. I mean, it's it's a magnificent painting. Did, when you finished it, did you did you sort of say, yes? You know, did you feel that you'd cracked it? I felt I didn't want to do any more to it. Mm. That, that felt right at that point. And, and clearly the judges uh, agreed. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was totally amazed by that, I must say. It, it's, yeah, no, I, it, it just stands out, doesn't it? There's not, not one painting in the whole of the online exhibition that is, that is like that. 
yeah. and that has that has that concept so you know many many congratulations and uh, of course it's sold as well now so yes. It's, yeah. it's, it's great that you've got some drawings and sketches to to remind you you know of what of what yeah. you achieved yeah. what did your family say when you when you showed it to them oh they're very kind they they always say they they like things whether they do or not is another matter but yes they're very <laughs> kind <laughs> oh i'm i'm sure i'm sure that they do and um also you know i looked at some of your other work as well you had two mm. other paintings that were selected yes and um one of your paintings the croft i think it's called the croft mm. it it um it, the two that the, your winning painting and the croft they go quite nicely together and did you have that in mind in terms of color matching and style and i i chose my paintings that i submitted to to be of similar techniques it's mainly because of what i've been interested in doing this these last few weeks months and it, and and it seems that that with your imaginative um volcanic painting you know perched on the edge and the croft that you you very much are inspired by being outdoors you know the atmosphere the wind the rain the green you know it's that on both of those paintings that really comes across is, is that is that the case in general for you I, th I think yeah i think atmosphere is very important um being out and having had so many years of experience of walking and getting wet and muddy and uh, so <laughs> on um keep all those memories yeah and, hopefully uh, you haven't those. been in, in too many volcanic explosions <laughs> oh no 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 um i must say that was um that that painting was purely from imagination mm -hmm. and it wasn't till afterwards that i started looking into um natural outcrops of rocks and uh finding where they were and monasteries um some some parts of france have got these really odd outcrops of rocks and they've got little monasteries and uh buildings just perched on the top and some in some cases people have to be hauled up by rope to get there oh my goodness <laughs> well you know look what you've started I, there could be a whole discussion around you know your painting and you know it's, it could be fairy tale-ish as well couldn't it yes. as well as, as well as catastrophic I mm. mean it's it's it, it must make you feel really good that something that started off in your back garden in such a small way <laughs> has has ended up being you know being a real talking point amongst our artists yeah <laughs> And also your your other painting, this very very gentle. Um, I think it's is it off the ground the dance. Yes. This yeah. this very very gentle, almost opaque um, sort of circle of figures. That that is is quite a contrast, isn't it? That's very very different from if you like the other two. Thank and again, what what inspired you you know what what where did that come from that painting it's so it's so beautifully gentle and relaxing isn't it i love it thank you um like croft and i suppose in to, to to some extent the um perched on the edge they've all been doodles to some extent um more so the croft because um with dry stone walling they they're a real joy to to draw each mm -hmm. each stone and layering and um, get, getting the getting the angles and the the weight in place. Um, the colours are quite muted and has a similarity to the uh, perched on the edge. I suppose it's a similar palette of colour. Uh, with the the dancers, that was inspired by. Um, well, I've been watching dances on the tv over the last few months and sketching the the dancers and um uh there's been a brilliant one um the northern ballet um mm. dracula absolutely fantastic the, the, the cape i haven't got around to doing a painting of that yet just sketches but that will be next in line um i was I, i'd got a sheet of paper where i i've got lots of sheets of paper where i experiment leave them alone, put them away and then drag them out, see what 
what inspires me to go on there. So this one came out and um, as my head was full of dancers, I thought I'd just put a few on. I did a few sketches of different shapes that dancers were making and um, selected just the three that seemed to fit together quite well. And I, um, I had in mind um, putting some more uh, calligraphy on the, the, the wall and to define it as a wall. And then in the end, I, I thought, well, quite honestly, the, the figures and the wall just merge together and mm -hmm. um, they can be part of the wall or make it more two dimensional rather than three dimensional. Yes, there's almost a little sort of trick when you look at it. Mm. You know, from when I when I looked at it originally, it sort of seemed to be coming towards you, but also going away. And mm. it was like an optical illusion, if you yes. like. Which yes, because I left some areas um, translucent so that you could see through to the background. Mm. No, it's it's mm. it's a charming painting, and and actually, it's quite nice that it's in the middle on the exhibition. It's in the middle of the other two paintings which I think is quite, mm. quite nice because it sets, <laughs> they set yeah. each other off, don't they? Yes, yeah. They set each other off. So Leslie, well done. And um, I know that alongside your Rose Bowl uh, award, you, you had a voucher. Have you, have you had any thoughts about what you might spend that voucher on? Well, I was thinking um, maybe some sketchbooks because I do get through them quite rapidly. And um, I, I found one today, which I hadn't, hadn't made any marks in. So once that's completed, I will st still need to have some more. So, yes, I think that's what I will do once I feel brave enough to head into town and oh, get to Tyndall's. I think you can order online, I think, from them. Right, I shall do which, that then. Which might, which might be helpful. But um, no, it's great. And, and it's, it's really lovely that this, this year we've had so much support from our sponsors. And, yes. uh, you know, I know a lot of our artists do use Tyndall's, whether in Cambridge or Ely and mm. online. And, you know, a big thank you to the company, I think, from, from both of us. Yes. Yes, it's, it's very generous of them. Leslie, is there anything else you'd like to say that I, I haven't covered or you haven't covered about your paintings or about art in general or the exhibition? Um can't think of anything offhand. Oh, well, it's been, it's been but it's, it's, it's a lovely exhibition. I'm, I'm really pleased it's gone forward. And um, Laurie's done an amazing job getting it set up and uh, um, everyone else that's involved with the whole, um, the whole of this exhibition is, is uh, to be uh, awarded a, a big pat on the back, I think. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you for your contribution and um, lovely to talk to you and um, well done again. Bye thank bye. Thank you very Lizzie. much. Right. Bye bye. Bye. bye.